Now on four, be ready for a rough ride and some strong language in the first in a new series, Critical Condition. You got to accentuate the positive, eat limb, mind hit the negative and latch on to the affirmative, don't mess with Mr. In-Between. Stand-up comedians can seem very hostile towards their critics. And I don't mean to sound churlish. I've had a lot of fucking luck here. I don't think the critics can hurt, really. Uh, me, at this point, you know, because they've said nothing but that I'm an asshole and should leave for five years. And uh... Here at the Edinburgh Festival, it can feel like the battle lines are drawn between critics and comedians. And of course, I cultivate a lot of affection for critics like most performers, you know. I think the word critic suggests an insect that eats its own for pleasure. <laughs> no, I'm critic. And they, I, uh, they're entitled to their opinion and shit. I mean, if there weren't critics, uh, God, that'd be great, huh? Wouldn't it? That's, um, well, basically, what it is, you see, is I'm a cretin, kind of idiot who'll spend August up here seeing five shows. Basically, what it is, you see, is I'm a critic. And now, into this uneasy atmosphere comes Ian Shuttleworth, the Financial Times comedy critic. Ian's the first comedy critic ever to make that leap across the divide and become a stand-up comedian. And now, oh dearly beloved, I'm here to share the fruits of my often bitter, sometimes openly immoral experience with you. Ian Shuttleworth has written a comedy routine that incorporates songs and funny anecdotes about his life as a critic. He's booked himself a fortnight run at the Pleasance Theatre and he's allowed us to film his progress. <laughs> Ian's got a head start over most new comedians. He's got some very influential friends here, fellow critics and even members of the judging panel for the Perrier Comedy Award. Now you know what it feels like. Ian hopes to get some rave reviews and maybe even win the Perrier Award, like Steve Coogan and Sean Hughes before him. The most important review of all here is a five star review in The Scotsman. Fuck a word again. What it is, you see, basically, is I'm a cretin. The kind of idiot who'll spend August up here seeing five sh Well, what it is, you see, basically, is I'm a critic. But things haven't been good so far, and there's been no review in The Scotsman. Word of mouth hasn't got round yet. Uh, I got locked in there. It's Thursday, and I've gone to see James Christopher, the theatre critic for The Times and a friend of Ian's. James is in Edinburgh to judge the Perrier Award. Watching people die on stage is one of the great sports of the Edinburgh Festival. Most comedians only come to Edinburgh so a judge like James will consider their show. In a few days' time, James will judge Ian's performance. One always goes into a theatre with expectation, carrying hope. And one always leaves depressed. Well, maybe not. Has anyone else here got kids? Not as far as I know. <laughs> Don't marry anyone that's in time. Does he finish? Probably an hour. I'll tell you a traumatic thing that happens when you go to school. Uh, I've even heard women answering that question the same way. It's like, Adam, do you have any children? Not as far as I know. <laughs> Now, I'll tell you that the real reason I find hairdressers a traumatic place, and I'm just going to come right out of the closet on this one, is I have a hairy back. <laughs> yeah, that's one, man. Go, yeah, well, that's fine. You can make that noise if you want to, but I have something I need to tell you. You know that thing about blokes not knowing where the clitoris is? Big lie. Known for years. Just don't care. <laughs> See you later, John. Sorry. I've seen four shows, I've walked out of three. Did you enjoy it? No, I didn't. Uh, no, I didn't enjoy it either. Uh, that's why I left. Um, 
but I've been keeping away from you. Was it again the last 20 minutes that you thought were better than the uh, first 45 minutes? No, it was all, it was all right. Fine. It was crap. Uh, John, that's going to happen all the time. Is that you're going to go and see shows? But the first like, 45 minutes, or 40 minutes, you're going to actually sit there. But the last 25 minutes, you're going to go, fuck, I want to get out of here. And you just got to go. Why waste your time? Go and see this crap. Just fucking get out, you know. Friday. Ian's not been happy these past few days. There's still been no review in The Scotsman. Tomorrow, James will be considering Ian's show for the Perrier Award. I hope that James doesn't walk out of Ian's show too. Ian and James are friends and fellow critics, and I don't want an unpleasant scene to ensue. You see, I wasn't caring as much until you started following me and getting me taking the issue every night. Now the dramatic tension's escalating and escalating and it's getting to me as well. Saturday. James is half an hour late for Ian's show, which is in full swing. This isn't a good start. You see, for years I made no bones about my corruptibility. You know, I'd come right out and tell people, well, you want a positive mention? That'll be a couple of pints. Rave review, well, that's sexual favours of a member of the company. Never go to any solo biographical show performed by an American actress of a certain age. If you read in the notes, and as I did a few years ago, that so-and-so is probably best loved for her long-running portrayal of Cora Beth Godsey in The Waltons, you know you don't want to get any closer to it than Musselburgh. <laughs> Genuine example. <laughs> But, in a late-breaking edition to the show, the, uh, we've got a fine example from Tuesday's Scotsman. Um, opening paragraph of the, re of the review. A look at Wallace Carruthers, the inventor of nylon, on the night of his suicide. This solo <laughs> performance charts the alcoholism, failed love affairs and mental illness which led to his despair. And I know we'll Brilliant. all be beating a path to that venue. That's brilliant. But, possibly, the greatest value-free one-liner ever written is Lovers of Latvian avant-garde drama will love this Latvian avant-garde. Later, Ian will identify James's laughter as the turning point. It gave him confidence and it changed the atmosphere in the room. It became the moment when Ian finally won over the audience. Thanks a lot. After the show, James announces that he thinks Ian should win the Perrier Award. Yep. Uh, Ian Shuttleworth. His material is fantastic. I mean, yeah. and what he does with it is, is actually took me by, completely by surprise. I mean, Ian. Some of you may know him, but he's a genuine eccentric. I, can't, I don't understand what he goes on about 99% of the time in real life. And on stage, it suddenly makes sense. <laughs> Maybe that's... He's all, I... 150 shows had been considered for the Perrier Award at this meeting. And now, thanks to James, Ian is down to the final 20. Oh, bugger me, it worked. Uh... Oh. I guess trading on my status. I thought I'd be able to get some attention from the panelists I knew. And maybe... Maybe parlay it into some kind of, of novelty citation. But serious consideration hadn't... Hadn't occurred to me. Um, yeah, again... Uh, one of the things that y you don't let yourself dream because it's so completely at odds with you know, the likelihood of how reality was going to pan out. Tuesday. Word of Ian's place on the Perrier long list has got around and now Ian is big news in Edinburgh. 
finally a Scotsman review has been written by another close friend of Ian's, Anya. Maniacally weaving facts and anecdotes into a seamless and sometimes shameless stream of witticisms, he explains what the words on all those publicity blurbs really mean. He gives hilarious examples of why shows using the words like wacky and unpredictable should be given a wide berth. He, he deserved a good review, so that's what I gave him. I tried to keep my personal um, involvement to one side and just continued as a normal reviewer. I don't know if that worked. How many stars have you given it? I have given it five um, okay. out of five. Um, it was going to be four and a half, but he said if I gave him five stars, he would never propose marriage to me again. So uh, I went with it. <laughs> Did it cross your mind maybe to put some criticism into the review? People still have feelings. You may not have enjoyed all the show, but there must be some redeeming features there which make people think, well, I can still hold my head up in the street and not feel like I throw myself under the ne next bus. Um, and he is. I, I think he's quite a sensitive person as well, so you have to take all these things into consideration when you have this kind of power. I thought Ian would be overjoyed at the news of the imminent five-star review, but instead he's very angry. Ian's heard that the Scotsman's editors have been docking stars from reviews, and Ian's five-star review may appear as four stars. Ian feels this is a terrible injustice. Well, as far as I'm concerned, if it comes out and it's got four, then the Pleasants can damn well put the fifth star back up and stick that on the publicity. And if the Scotsman call us on it, well, I'm perfectly prepared to sing from the rooftops that they've been buggering about with the copy they've been receiving from their reviewers for no readily apparent reason. Two hours later, and Ian's review finally hits the street. I'm afraid that his success may be changing him. Ian has tasted glory now and I don't think he'll be happy until he has everything. Having already been told unofficially by the reviewer that it was a five-star review, it now appears in print as four. Oh yes, if I, were being, if I were being rational, I'd be dead chuffed, but you know, the fact is, I know that as submitted, it was even better than it's come out as printed. So, yeah, I want it all, me.